Ezra is a movie starring Bobby Cannavale and Robert De Niro about a man who has an autistic kid. And I know what you're thinking automatically is like, oh God, how are they going to handle this? Because even though the movie's called Ezra and Ezra's the name of the kid who's autistic, Ezra's not the main character of the movie. Seeing the trailers for it, I was just worried. I'm like, oh, how well is this going to be handled? Because like it, it looked from the outside like it was a movie not made for autistic people, but just about autistic people for an holistic audience. And part of that is just an inevitable result of most people are holistic and not autistic, so obviously they have more money. But when you're telling a story about a group of people, you want to make sure that like you get it right and you include those people. And so like I was very, very concerned watching this movie. Well, going into this movie. Once I saw the movie, like, I, I think it actually is phenomenal. The movie is like a fictionalized retelling of like uh, events of like the screenwriter's life raising an autistic kid. The movie actually talks a, a lot about how autism is something that we really haven't understood a lot about until recently. And so even though his kid is diagnosed and he's not and his dad's not, there are a lot of people who are wondering, like, are we autistic too? Because they have certain social and emotional issues relating to others. Um, the Bobby Cannavale's character has a lot of anger issues that he has trouble regulating in terms of dealing with other people. I almost had an emotional breakthrough watching this movie. There was just some scene where Robert De Niro, who plays Bobby Cannavale's dad, is talking to him about like patterns of behavior that he keeps finding himself stuck in where like he's always seeing himself as the aggrieved party with somebody on the outside that he's fighting against. And once he's defeated somebody, well, then he just goes and finds somebody else that is now the enemy that he has to, to, to fight. And like it's a never ending cycle and it, he never knows how to get out of it. And like that spoke directly to me. And so like that alone is definitely making me perceive this movie better, but also like the kid Ezra himself, I think he is portrayed fairly accurately in terms of an autistic kid. Like, it, it, it's not like the Rain Man situation where, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, no, he's he's a genius. He just doesn't know how to interact with people. Like, no, he's he's a kid. He's just a kid who has certain, you know, misses certain social cues. Like the Bobby Cannavale's character, he's a stand-up comic. He takes his kid to one of his shows and his kid just keeps like shouting out the punchlines to his routine because his kid's heard his routine before, you know, just dealing with like, okay, kid, you gotta, you gotta shut up. I'm telling the jokes now. And the central story of the movie is that because of Bobby Cannavale's violent tendencies, he actually loses like visitation rights for his son. But his son is also like being put on some like pretty severe medication because they like misinterpreted some of his son's behaviors. And, and so he ends up kidnapping his son to try, you know, because he's like, look, I've got to save my kid from all of these people who just want to, you know, dope him up. So it's a road trip movie dealing with the ethics of, hey, you just kidnapped to kid but also like you can understand why he did that and his uh, ex-wife who's like you know trying to chase him down and track him and so like i don't think it's a perfect movie but i think the subject matter is handled with care i would be very interested in somebody who is actually autistic i would be interested in their perspective on it i don't think i'm autistic I took one of those tests for it and it was like, I was in that range where it's like, no, you're not quite autistic, but you're like, high. but like I have ADHD and there's a lot of overlap between ADHD and autism. So I don't know, ish maybe. And I, I found a lot to resonate with in this film, but I would be interested in somebody who is diagnosed autistic, what they think about this movie. Vera Farmiga is in the movie. She plays a very minor character. She's just like an old friend of Bobby Cannavale's who helps them out for a little bit. And I wish she was in the movie longer because I love Vera Farmiga. And I've talked about this before, like in my review of the Conjuring movies that like, I think she is a singular talent in her generation and she's being wasted. I don't think she's being given the roles that are meaty enough to match her level of talent. Like go watch Bates Motel. She knocks it out of the park. She's such a good actress and like a lot of what she gets is just kind of crap roles. And this isn't a crap role. It's just as soon as she showed up, I was like, oh, she should have been in this movie 30 minutes earlier. I love her. 
you know, I'm always going to be singing Vera from Yu-Gi-Oh's praises. I think she's phenomenal. I don't think this movie is inspiration porn. You know, like, I, I don't think it's like, oh, here's here's all the things that I learned because of my autistic kid necessarily. But it is in that general area. I really liked the movie. I think some people might take some issues with it. I, that's why I'm curious to, to to listen to somebody who's, you know, diagnosed autism, what their take is on the movie. But I genuinely really liked it. Uh, except for the ending, or I, I should say, like, the post credit scene. Because, like, part of the thing is that he's a stand-up comic, and as he's kidnapped his kid, Jimmy Kimmel has booked him on his show. But he lives in New York, and Kimmel films in L.A., and so he's got to, like, drive all the way to, you know, uh, cross country with his kidnapped kid in tow. So there's all that. But at, at the end, it shows him like actually like meeting Jimmy Kimmel. And you can tell that Bobby Cannavale and Jimmy Kimmel are not on set at the same time, because when it's Bobby Cannavale, it's just Bobby Cannavale in shot. And maybe you see the shoulder of Jimmy Kimmel. And when it's Jimmy Kimmel in shot, you don't see Bobby Cannavale at all. So like it's it's very painfully obvious that they just shot these things separate. And honestly, Jimmy Kimmel is kind of annoying just in general. He is certainly not my favorite late night show host. And I felt like throwing that in. It like didn't even fit the tone of the rest of the movie. It was far more comedic than the rest of the movie. And it just kind of was just like, you're just putting this in here because the whole getting on Kimmel was like, you know, one of his motivations in the movie. But it, it just it didn't fit with it. Otherwise, I, I really like this movie. I would recommend it. Hey, thanks for watching. Your view means a lot. Don't forget to toss me a like and subscribe and ring the bell and drop a comment below telling me what you thought of the video. I stream Mondays and Fridays at 5 p.m. Pacific, so catch me live and join in on the convo. You can find all my socials in the description below, and thank you to all my patrons with a very special shout out to my Whale Shark tier patrons Ms. Milena and Hella Vitrum, and my Anemone Friend tier patrons Piftle Cakes and Geek Filter. Your support means the world. Catch you next time.